How say you by this change? This cannot be by no assay of reason. It is a pageant to keep us in false gaze. We must not think the Turk is so unskilled to leave that latest which concerns him first. Nay, in all confidence, he's not for Rhodes. Here is more news. The Ottomites, reverend and gracious, steering the due course for the Isle of Rhodes, have there enjoined them with an after fleet. Aye, so I thought. How many? Of thirty sail, and now they do re-stem their backward course toward Cyprus. Signora Montana, with her free duty, recommends you thus. Tis certain, then, for Cyprus. Here is Brabantia. And the valiant Moor. Valiant Othello, we must straight employ you against the general enemy, Ottoman. Welcome, noble Signora. We lacked your counsel and help tonight. So did I yours. Good, Your Grace, pardon me. Neither my place nor aught I heard of business hath raised me from my bed. What's the matter? My daughter. Dead? Aye, to me. She is abused, stolen from me, and corrupted with spells and medicines bought of Montevans. For nature, so preposterously to err, being not deficient, blind or lame of sense, sans witchcraft could not. Whoever he be that in this foul proceeding hath thus beguiled your daughter of herself, and you of her, the bloody book of law, you shall yourself read in the bitter letter after your own sense. Humbly, I thank your grace. Here is the man now, this Moor, whom now it seems your special mandate for state affairs have hither brought. What in your own part can you say to this? Nothing, but it is so. Most reverend seniors, that I have taken away this woman's daughter, it is most true. True, I have married her. The very head in front of my offending hath this extent, no more. Rude am I in my speech, and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace. Yet by your gracious patience, I will around unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms for such proceedings I am charged with all. I won her daughter. A maiden never bold, a spirit so still and quiet that her motions blushed at herself to fall in love with what she feared to look upon. I therefore vouch again that with some mixture powerful or the blood or some dram conjured to such effect, he wrought on her. To vouch this is no proof? But Othello speak. Did you, by indirect and false courses, subdue and poison this young man's affections? Send for the lady, and let her speak of me before her mother. If you do find me foul in her report, the office I do hold of you, not only take away, but let your sentence even fall upon my life. Fetch Desdemona hither. Until she come, to your grave ears I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love, and she in mine. Say, Othello. Her mother loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life. From year to year, the battles, the sieges, the fortunes I have passed. I ran it through, even from my boyish days, to the very moment that she bade me tell it, wherein I spake of most disastrous chances, of hairbreadth escapes in the imminent deadly breach. This to hear what Desdemona seriously inclined. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith, t'was strange, yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man, and bade me, if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story, and that would woo her. 
She loved me for the dangers I had passed. And I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. I use this tale would win my daughter too. I pray you hear her speak. If she confess to being half the wooer, destruction on my head is my bad blame might on the man. My noble mother, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And as much duty as my father showed to you, so much I profess I may do to the more, my lord. with all my heart, which but thou hast already with all my heart, I would keep from thee. I am done, my lord. I humbly beseech you to see to the affairs of state. The Turk, with a most mighty preparation, makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. You must therefore be content to slumber the gloss of your new fortune with this more stubborn and boisterous expedition. I do acknowledge natural and prompt alacrity I find in hardness. And do undertake these present wars against the Ottomites. Most humbly therefore bending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife. If you please, be it at her mother's. I'll not have it so. Nor I. Nor I. What would you, Desdemona? That I did love the more to live with him, my downright violence and scorn of fortunes may trumpet to the world, so that, dear lords, if I be left behind, a moth of peace, and he go to the war, the rights for which I love him are bereft me, and I, a heavy interim, shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. Be it as you shall privately determine, either for her stay or going, the affair cries haste and speed must answer it. You must await tonight. With all my heart. At nine in the morning here we'll meet again. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. And, noble Signora, if virtue no delighted beauty lack, your son-in-law is far more fair than black. Look to her, Lord, if thou hast eyes to see. She hath to